Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on stable angina. Angina pectoris is the symptom complex, occurring when an imbalance between myocardial oxygen supply and demand, causes transient myocardial ischemia. Coronary atheroma is by far the most common cause of angina. However, the symptom may also be a manifestation of other forms of heart disease, such as aortic valve disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or coronary vasospasm, as in Prinz Metal's angina. Occasionally, the coronary arteries are involved in other disorders, such as polyarteritis and other connective tissue disease. For clinical features, stable angina is characterized by central chest pain, discomfort or breathlessness, that is precipitated by exertion or other forms of stress, and is promptly relieved by rest. Physical examination is frequently negative but may reveal evidence of aortic stenosis, CAD risk factors like hypertension and diabetes. LV dysfunction, other arterial disease like carotid brutes or peripheral vascular disease. And conditions that exacerbate angina, such as anemia and thyrotoxicosis. For investigations, resting ECG. This may show evidence of previous MI but is often normal, even in patients with severe coronary artery disease. The most convincing ECG evidence of myocardial ischemia is obtained by demonstrating reversible ST segment depression or elevation, with or without T wave inversion, during symptoms. Another test is exercise ECG. The patient's ECG and BP are monitored during exercise using a standard treadmill or bicycle ergometer protocol. Planar or down sloping ST segment depression of 1 mm or more is indicative of ischemia. Up sloping ST depression is less specific. Exercise testing is also a useful means of assessing the severity of coronary disease and identifying high-risk individuals. However, false negatives and positives do occur and the predictive accuracy of exercise testing is lower in women than men. Myocardial perfusion scanning. This is particularly helpful in patients who are unable to exercise, or who have an equivocal or uninterpretable exercise test. Sinti scans of the myocardium are obtained at rest and during stress, after IV administration of a radioactive isotope that is taken up by viable perfused myocardium. A perfusion defect present during stress but not at rest indicates reversible myocardial ischemia, whereas a persistent defect suggests previous MI. Other investigations are stress echocardiography. This alternative to myocardial perfusion scanning has similar predictive accuracy, and is superior to exercise ECG. Ischemic segments of myocardium exhibit reversible defects in contractility on echocardiography during exercise or pharmacological stress. Areas of infarction do not contract at rest or during stress. The technique is particularly useful for identifying areas of viable, hibernating, myocardium in patients with heart failure and CAD being considered for revascularization. Coronary arteriography provides detailed anatomical information about the extent and nature of CAD. It may be indicated when non-invasive tests have failed to elucidate the cause of atypical chest pain but is usually performed with a view to revascularization. For management of stable angina, first is identification and control of risk factors. The most important lifestyle modification is smoking cessation, but other steps include regular exercise and aiming for ideal body weight. All patients with CAD should receive statin therapy, irrespective of serum cholesterol concentration. BP should be treated to a target of less than 140-85 mm of mercury, although ACE inhibitors are of benefit in all patients with vascular disease. Aspirin reduces the risk of adverse events such as MI, and should be prescribed indefinitely for all patients with CAD. Clopidogrel is an equally effective alternative in patients intolerant of aspirin. Next is relief of symptoms. Patients should be advised to avoid vigorous exertion after a heavy meal or in cold weather. Sublingual glycerol trinitrate in spray or tablet form will usually relieve an attack of angina in 2-3 to three minutes. Patients should be encouraged to use GTN prophylactically before engaging in exercise that is liable to provoke symptoms. Anti-anginal drugs. Five groups of drugs are used to prevent the symptoms of angina. Namely nitrates, beta blockers, calcium antagonists, potassium channel activators, and ivabradine. There is little convincing evidence that one group is more effective than another, although it is conventional to start with low-dose aspirin, a statin, sublingual GTN and a beta blocker, then add a calcium channel antagonist or a long-acting nitrate later, if necessary. The goal is control of angina with minimum side effects and the simplest possible drug regimen. Revascularization should be considered if symptoms persist despite the use of two drugs. 
Definitive management would be percutaneous coronary intervention, or CABG. For PCI, this is performed by passing a fine guide wire across a coronary stenosis under radiographic control, and using it to position a balloon, which is then inflated to dilate the stenosis. A coronary stent is a piece of coated metallic scaffolding that can be deployed on a balloon and used to maximize and maintain dilatation of a stenosed vessel. PCI is an effective symptomatic treatment but has not been shown to improve survival in patients with stable angina. It is mainly used in single or two vessel disease, whereas coronary artery bypass graft, CABG surgery is usually the preferred option in patients with three vessel or left main disease. The main acute complication is vessel occlusion by thrombus or dissection, which may lead to myocardial damage requiring stenting or emergency CABG. The overall mortality risk is less than 0.5%. The main long-term complication is restenosis. In combination with aspirin and heparin, adjunctive therapy with potent platelet inhibitors, such as clopidogrel or glycoprotein 2B3A receptor antagonists, improves the outcome of PCI, with lower short and long-term rates of death in MI. Next, let's look at the CABG surgery. The internal mammary arteries, radial arteries, or reversed segments of saphenous vein, can be used to bypass coronary artery stenoses, usually under cardiopulmonary bypass. The operative mortality is around 1.5%, but higher in elderly patients and those with poor LV function or significant comorbidity. There is a 1-5% to risk of perioperative stroke. Arterial grafts have much better long-term patency rates than vein grafts. Treatment with aspirin or clopidogrel improves graft patency, while intensive lipid-lowering therapy slows progression of disease in the native coronary arteries and grafts. CABG improves survival in patients with left main coronary stenosis and those with symptomatic three-vessel coronary disease. That's all for this video. Thank you.